So we'll call the meeting to order at 4.11 today. Um, and I'm just gonna pull up my agenda here. Uh, the first order of business is generally to approve the minutes. I approve the minutes from March 4th. Maureen, are you there to second? Yep, I second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then um, we'll hand it over to Shelly. Give us an update on the financial statements. Sure. Um, so I don't actually have any warrants to present for you today. There is a note um, in my memo about warrants. Um, and what I would like to ask based on um, Mass General Law is that we designate one school committee member to approve all of the bills and warrants and payroll orders, um, particularly during this time, just to make it a little bit easier for all of us. Um, but it'll also be help, uh, helpful when we have to close for, say, a snow day and we decide to cancel a meeting, but we still want to get warrants out. Um, and also during the summer when we don't meet. So um, we can certainly have a little bit more of a discussion about that. Um, in the meantime, warrants are being prepared for this month. Michelle did not have them all ready yet. My hope is that they are ready tomorrow. And Scott uh, Paul, our IT director, has set us up with Adobe Sign, which is an, a legal electronic signature uh, platform. And the hope would be that we can upload the uh, warrants and the bills to you electronically. You would receive them by email, and then you would go through and sign the warrants electronically versus signing them in paper so that you don't actually have to come into the office. So I'm hoping that we can get that done by the end of the day tomorrow. And again, if we can, if you can vote on one person, that would be that signature, that would be helpful as part of that process. Okay. Um, can I make a suggestion? Since, yeah. since I'm not computer savvy and I don't mind um, going the paper route, and, and if Bob Decker can't come in for Frontier, I can maybe come in and kill two birds with one stone if you want, Shelley. So the, the challenge right now is nobody's really working in the office. So we could set oh. up something different um, it, like you did yesterday where you just went and picked yeah. them up um, yeah. if, if we wanted to do it that way. I would love to be able to try out the, the digital platform. Um, yeah. If you go to that, then you know, obviously you, it's your purview. We don't have to go that route. I just want to say I do that for the collaborative. I'm on the warrant subcommittee and I sign, I think it is Adobe sign. I sign electronically. So if you wanted that, I could do that. You're already. I'll make, a, mo I'll make, I'll make a motion for Marine to sign the warrants during, during these times. A second. All in favor. All right. I, we're good. Thank you, Maureen. Thanks, yep. Thanks Maureen. Thank you. So, Shelly, Shelly, isn't it the hope that if we can get this running smoothly, that your experience in Chicopee, they were doing this, is how they were doing their warrant signing anyways, and that this might be a, we be able to be able to have multiple people digitally sign and be able to re review the documents when we get this running smoothly? Yeah, that is how they did it in Chicopee. No one had to come in to sign warrants and they were not presented at school committee meetings. If school committee members had questions, the budget director would bring those questions back to me as the assistant budget director at that district. And then I would respond to individual school committee members about questions, um, answering, you know, whatever concerns that they had. And, you know, of course, you don't have to sign something. And if that is the case and you don't sign it electronically, we pull that out until the issue can be resolved and we push the other ones through. But but I was just only, I'm only stating the fact we're going to see how this rolls out. And this might be while we're in a crisis now, I think long-term the, this might be a new, a new way of doing yeah. business that we should yeah. be looking at as well. Yeah, yeah. I like that idea. That's a great idea. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so moving on, I did send out the expenditure reports. I'm happy to take questions on those year to date. Um, and this is sort of jumping ahead on the agenda a little bit because I know that there is a COVID-19 update on there. So 
Um, if there's no questions about the current expenditures, we could go on to talking about the impact um, to the budget based on our closure. Um, I'm I'm good with that. Are you guys okay with that? Yep. Yep. Okay. okay. Thank you, Shelly. You're welcome. Um, so as we had talked about at the joint school committee meeting, the primary concerns with the um, budgets at this time are the revolving funds, which include early childhood, school lunch, and out of school time. We're losing revenue in each of these programs with school being closed. Um, some of them are more self-sufficient than others. For instance, the out of school time program entirely funds itself. They bring in their revenue, they pay their staff, they pay for their own field trips, they pay for their own supplies. Nothing hits local budget or any other funding source. So um, for them to have a hit with this closure is having a significant impact on them. Um, early childhood is partially funded locally, but it's also funded through tuitions. And then school lunch is the same. We, we fund part of school lunch locally. Although in Waitley this year, we did make that shift because they had such a significant revolving balance um, that right now they are self-funded. But in the, the point with this is that all three of these programs are gonna take a huge hit to their revolving fund that would be carried over to FY21. So we're gonna need to potentially reassess how those programs are funded next year. Um, and in order to do that, we need to have some potential savings this year. And those savings could be realized from any of our other funding sources, general funds, school choice, um, grants, if there is flexibility in the grant. So at this time, all of our spending has been frozen outside of essential purchases and payroll. Um, Chrissy and I can certainly have a conversation about those things or with um, director of technology or director of facilities if there's something that comes up. But we are making an attempt to capture savings wherever we can. Um, and, and there is a potential that there might need to be some changes to the FY21 budget that we did already approve um, so that we can help support any loss in revenue in those programs. Um, we're also unsure at this point if the town will request any changes to our budget based on potential revenue loss that they're seeing. So while I don't have any concrete numbers to talk about. I'm certainly happy to take questions and we'll provide more info as soon as we know more. So Shelly, can I ask a question? This re relates to the memo you shared at the, the other school committee meeting, right? And right. Those Waitley, ha we have anticipated balances at the end of the year for all of our accounts right now. Right. Correct. So are you saying that that's not enough to get us through next year or? So it might not be. Um, I have to look a little bit closer, but with preschool, even with them having, preschool is probably my highest concern right now. Okay. Um, with them having a revenue loss of $30,000, that mm -hmm. is going to eat into their rollover for next year. So if we had planned to spend that $30,000 next year on salaries and wages and supplies or whatever other services are needed, we might have to find alternate funding to cover some of those expenses. We don't want to deplete their account by the end of fiscal year 21. So. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be looking at how we can save money in the current year's budget, not early childhood, but general fund or school choice so that we can use that money to help offset some of that deficit. Otherwise, they're going to be in a really tough position going into fiscal year 22. 21. No, 22. No, 22. So I, I think... Um, Waitley is probably in the best position, even though $30,000 is a significant revenue loss. I do mm -hmm. think that we are going to have an easy time finding that money, particularly because school lunch program has such a high balance right now that we've moved off those wages that we had originally planned to pay this year. So that's mm -hmm. going to free up some money for us right there. Um, and mm -hmm. then Christy and I are in conversation about other budget lines that can be frozen um, to save, you know, we don't need to be buying as many supplies for the office, obviously, if everyone continues to work remotely. Right. Um, I, so I do think that there will be an impact to FY21 in those programs. I think out of school time and school lunch will be fine. I think we mm -hmm. need to be cognizant of how much money they're losing and 
protective of their money moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't think we'll have to fund them in any way next year, but I am concerned about preschool. Okay. And that would require the town to, well, these monies carry over at the end of the year anyway. So it's Correct. not, it's more about, um, can we add money to these or is it about taking the expenses and putting those on the general? Exactly. About putting so them if on we the can free up $10,000, say in the general fund, mm -hmm. we would reallocate some of the salaries that are being paid from early childhood funds onto general funds so that they can have some <laughs> savings in their account. Right. So we should be able to do that this year because we don't, we're only paying the salaries right now, right? In general or? Salaries are pretty much our whole budget. Yeah. Yeah. And at this point in the year, there's not a lot of savings in the categories. Teachers have already spent, you know, whatever they were allocated for supplies and materials. Um, mm -hmm. There are some smaller pieces that I think we can pull things together. And I also think moving the school lunch wages for the cafeteria staff off earlier in the year is going to help us um, recover from some of the early childhood stress. Okay. So could you go, can you go backwards in time for the lunch and take salaries that have already been paid and charge them to the, to off this, off the general fund or is that what you're saying? No. Yeah. No, well, I'm saying use the money that we had allocated for school lunch because mm -hmm. school lunch is paying for itself and the balance is going and to be healthy and use that to pay, for and use that to pay early childhood staff. Yeah. Yes. For this year. Yep. So then they have the balance is protected. Right. The other option is, you know, we, we deplete their account. Um, and then next year, the FY21 budget has some of the early childhood, which I think will be more challenging um, to come up with some money given what we already have planned, you know, but we can certainly cross that bridge when we need to. Okay. Yeah, because if we have, if the tuition that people are paying is in the general fund that's paying for this, if we deplete this year's, we're going to have more revenue coming in to start in the year with the new people coming in, which should take care of most of it at the most of it at the beginning, right? Once we get revolving fund going more with the new people coming into it. Am I well, saying so that? we the way that we build the budget, we plan for a certain amount of tuitions already next year, and that money is already planned to be spent for the most part. Right. And this was where yeah, we but were that's for, but that's for the salaries and stuff. If you're anticipating whatever number of people coming in, that's that's going to be paying for the salaries next year. So if we deplete this year's to take care of the salaries, we'll have we'll have new money coming in next year to take care of the salaries. Correct? It's not like school choice where we're we're doing a, uh, we're spending it a year and ahead. It no, is sort of like school choice. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing Shelley explain that we are using some of the balance, some of this sort of savings account that we have for early childhood to cover salaries for early childhood specifically. So it, it doesn't, it isn't self-sufficient with just tuition from the early childhood. Correct. Students. So that's so where we get, where, where's the other money come from then? From the general budget for the school. That's where we're okay. sort of contributing to keep it running. I think. Okay. Because early remember, childhood does not fully fund itself. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank Maybe you. someday. And what I can do is prepare something next time we meet so that meeting. you can see more mm -hmm. concrete numbers and actually see what we're looking at. And that mm -hmm. might help bring it, you know, to clarity for you all. Um, and that'll give, you know, me and Chrissy and Darius a little bit more time to talk about if that's the best plan to offload some of their salaries. Um, and we can certainly make some recommendations, but you guys can look at hard numbers next time. I'll put something together for us. Okay. And then what about, um, I mean, do we need to be thinking about next year otherwise in your mind for the, I know that uh, some of the towns are asking for cuts. Waitley hasn't asked for any cuts yet. Um, the, yeah. They don't so, think it's wise to do that right now until they know better what the situation is gonna be. Right. So you may have heard that some of the, uh, another town has started to ask for looking at three to five percent revenue loss in the taxes this year. Um, those are 
um, just numbers being thrown around. Um, I did have a conversation with Brian, who's also had a conversation with um, the select board and finance committee of Waitley, and their 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 mentality right now is wait and see. We can't make decisions without facts. Right. Um, they're very fact driven group, which is very good. Right. And so they're saying, you know, um, obviously, um, that's part of the, these meetings is just to have general conversations about. Um, there's not a lot of new information today to talk about, but we may have to go down the road of looking at maybe a 3% cut. And what does that mean? And, you know, but before we just throw, I don't want to throw out numbers because that just makes people nervous. It, you know, right. makes our employees nervous. One, it makes, um, you know, we can throw all sorts of different things, scenarios out. So, you know, I want to say it's a, it's a big waste of time in the sense that we have an idea where a certain amount of monies would move from. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't want to talk about that publicly until we have to ask, until we have to, actually do that thing because people's lives are connected to those those kind of things so right. um i think right now we're waiting to see what it was supposed to be a big meeting today as you may or may not have known but oh, yeah I got they, a lot they, of they, they had technical it. issues and they canceled it till next week um, but okay. they're basically trying to forecast what the projections are of the revenues for fourth quarter in massachusetts and then what are they projecting here out and it's very hard to project when they don't know how long businesses are closed for so no matter what, the towns are going to take some sort of hit. And the mm -hmm. question is where, how big of a hit and where are they going to make it up from? And each town is different on how they're doing that. You know, some mm -hmm. may have rainy day funds, some may choose not to do capital projects, or some may choose to limit one area to pay it fund another area, but that's where we're going to have to work with the town. I'm also getting a lot of feedback from the state that this whole budget season is, not, is something like they haven't seen before in the fact that they are going to be normally it's like there's this kind of a one budget and the other budget negotiate you know the senate works on a house budget there's a negotiation they're gonna have to speed that whole process up and it's going to look very differently than it has in the past and so we're going to really work a lot closer i think with town government than ever before although whitley's always worked pretty close so um but <laughs> I think that you know, but just the idea of they're they're going to look at our budget and we're, they're going to look at their own budget and they're going to they may come back to us and say, you know, you know, I I don't like just general percentages. I look like I think the town should try to get a number they want to reach to be at. Yeah. And, yeah. Right. And if it's if they need us to cut, you know, five hundred dollars. So see how optimistic I am. Then we know exactly what we need to do instead of just kind of just general percentages. Like talk about talk about exact terms of numbers. Um, right. help reach their goals but um, so we're going to wait on that information but okay. uh, it is i did want to make sure we talked about it today because our agenda isn't really heavy today it's mostly just mm -hmm. getting everybody up to speed i mean those massive meetings are good for getting information out they're not good for no. you yeah yeah and, and just because i'm connected to two different schools right now there's a lot of planning going on with respect to not opening in the fall. I don't know how much discussion there is, but just, I know we don't wanna get into any too much um, right now until we have a little more known, but hopefully by the end of April, there will be a little more clarity on when potentially we could all reopen. And Correct, I mean, it's, it's the first question on the ticket is when are we going back? Um, right. May 4th does not seem realistic, um, considering they're talking about the peak in Western Mass of this to happen in the first weeks of May. Um, so I don't understand how we go back in the peak. So, but this is kind of, I don't know, it's the game the government's been playing, the state government's been playing from the beginning. It's like delay to make decisions and we all kind of wait. Um, we all wait to, to see how we're going to react. Um, right. But for this year, our budget is set and our staff would be paid through the end of the fiscal year, no questions. So we have Correct. that assurance, right? Correct. That's what we did at those joint meetings. Um, yeah. I'm not sure you were at the first one, but that I was the MOA. Yeah. 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 So we, we, we've decided we're going to pay people through and then also pay our non-union staffs through as well. And then mm -hmm. thus talking about those revolving <laughs> accounts that will be affected by that decision. And that's why, again, that's why the decision was made collectively because it, it does impact the following year. but. You know, was deemed that's the right thing to do. So okay, so hopefully hey, by next week we might have more information to yeah. to work with. Yeah. Hey Shelly, can I just ask a question? Anticipating paying everybody and everything's frozen, what do you think we're going to have left in the coffer to get back to the town, possibly? 
Um, I'm not sure we're going to be giving anything back to the town. Um, you know, it's all going to link back to some of these accounts that revolving accounts that we just talked about, particularly early childhood. You know, I really need to take a close look and and let some of the purchase orders and things that maybe are not in the system catch up. Um, you know, for instance, in Deerfield today, just for an example, Tina had thought she had $4,000 in an account that we weren't going to need. And bang, it was gone in a second because there was maintenance bills that hadn't been entered in the database yet. So, you know, I don't want to put a number on anything at this point. I think we need a month to let the yep. purchasing stop and catch up in the system. And then we can talk more concretely. Gotcha. Thank you. And I think, Bob, phrasing it a different way, money back to the town isn't really money for anybody watching, anybody watching on this, isn't really, a, we're not writing a check of, I'll use the $500 back to the town, here's $500 we have left over. We would be looking at the adjusting their costs for next year based on savings we have this year. That's kind of how yeah. the money back gotcha. would actually work. Well, yeah, yeah unspent budget that they, the town would potentially put somewhere for us to use in future time. Right. Right, yeah. Okay, so next meeting, it sounds like we'll have a lot more hopefully we'll have a lot more to talk about on that yeah point. i mean that's the idea is kind of get this meeting in my mind well last week when i said we really need to have individual meetings is to i want i want to make sure everybody understood where we were because you get in those group meetings you can't really ask questions and that kind of thing yeah. um and two i thought we'd have a little bit more information at this point um, it's good and bad we don't meaning it's yeah. good in the sense that maybe we'll get some hopefully there will be better news instead of just grim news moving forward um so yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys are doing a great job. I just wanted to make sure you know that. I know it's a lot, but I'm so impressed with how smoothly this is all going for our schools. So thank you. Absolutely. Um, the next part of our update was part of probably, it's part of also Chrissy's principal report. Um, the COVID. Well, so we did well, the COVID. Kind of talking about how what's going on with the school. I mean, what we're doing yeah. out here, and, and, and Chrissy can kind of bring the a lot of work went into, it, and the teachers are doing a lot of work, and so I want to make sure we get a little air time on that. Um, Chrissy, do you? I'm not taking over. And I, I'm sorry, it's easy to do on a virtual meeting. That's fine. Uh, Take away. I don't Take know if away. Chrissy could roll into our principal's report to talk about the COVID update on what the school is doing. Um, yeah, that'd be great. Kids. I'd love to hear about that. Sure. So it's it's been interesting, um, to say the least. Um, one of the things that we focused on at the beginning, and we thought you know things would settle down and would start to feel a little bit better, but taking care of the health and well-being has to be our primary concern, and it's something that goes up and down every day, especially in terms of um, how, how the kids are feeling emotionally. Um, and also trying to keep the keep the teachers moving forward because there's a lot of work to do to get into remote learning, and they also have their own families that they're they're trying to um, help through this. So during the first week, we met a lot. Um, we learned how to do this method of meeting, and I I think in the last three weeks, I've probably had I don't know a, a hundred of these kinds of meetings. Um, at first, it bothered me to see my picture. Now I don't. I don't even care anymore. Um, so we I met. Can't a lot. See it today. <laughs> um, we became familiar with the technology. Um, we've had access to a lot of these things all along, but we haven't had to use them. We haven't used Google Meet. Um, some classes had a Google Classroom going, but not all classrooms. So people had to dive in pretty quickly to to get familiar with the technology that's available to us. Um, and also to be able to check in on things, you know, there's lots of links out there. There's like thousands of things available for kids and it's coming at teachers and it's coming at schools. And the teachers have to spend a lot of time making sure that any place they're gonna send a student to, it is a safe spot for the kid to be in. So that takes up a lot of time. Um, so we, that first week we were really checking in to make sure that everyone was uh, all set in terms of um, the availability of food and technology. Um, and we did a lot of connecting that week. And there was not, you know, the, the kids had some things that they had to do. There were um, learning activities that were sent home. But the, the whole idea of that first week was just 
settling in and finding a way to connect. Um, and and the teachers and IAs met with whole classes, they met with small groups. Um, and I've heard back from parents that that kind of made all the difference in the world for a lot of folks. Um, kids who were really having a hard time emotionally once they were able to connect with their teachers, but more so with their classmates, it kind of changed things a little bit, um, made it a little more tolerable to get through this time that we're in. Um, so in the first three weeks, um, I sort of gave you a bull bulleted list of all the things that the educators have done. And when I say educators, I kind of mean our whole school staff, everybody is in on that. Um, so vir virtual meetings every day with different groups of students. Um, some teachers are recording read aloud. So if, um, if a classroom was reading a novel all together where the teacher was doing the read aloud, that continued after after we went home, but the teachers had to record themselves and then share that out with the class. Um, setting up Google Classrooms to create a central location for information, researching virtual field trips and spots that kids can go online. Um, checking in on individual students was another sort of primary concern. Uh, in those first days, we kept right on top of anyone that wasn't connecting with us so that we could reach out to them individually and see if there was anything that they needed help with. Um, we meet weekly as a staff and then bi-weekly in um, grade level cohorts. And that's just with me, but then uh, apart from me, the grade levels and there are all sorts of different groups that are meeting together regularly to support each other through this. Um, we've been busy creating systems so that students, teachers who work with the same students, so um, our PE teacher and our special ed teacher and our speech teacher and our classroom teacher all have a way to work together to coordinate what they're doing, but also to make sure that what we're communicating to parents isn't five different messages from five different people. Um, sort of that first week, that was that was the big learning curve, was we wanted to share information, but everyone was sharing information, and I think it was just, it was too much. Um, so hopefully we've gotten a little better with that. Um, and some folks have been engaging in professional development, and a lot of it has been professional development about some of the tools that we're using now um, for remote learning. Um, if you talk to anyone who has set up an actual remote learning program, um, it takes years to get a thing like this put together. And so the things that people have put together and you know, Kim McCarthy has been huge. I don't think she's slept in the last three weeks, um, but what has been put together is nothing short of a miracle in, in my mind. Um, people have really worked so hard. Um, we, let's see. Uh, two of our staff members had babies, so that was actually some. some I wanted to throw something in there that was a little a little lighter. Um, the past this past Saturday they was mostly, <laughs> um, No, they'll both be school choice children. Yeah, excellent. Um, I'm I'm going to check and see if we can put them on our rolls for next year. Um, this past Saturday was supposed to be our, our spaghetti supper for our sixth grade, and mm -hmm. as Katie knows it's a big deal for the kids. They spend a lot of time raising money and preparing and um, creating the menu. And you know, it's a it's a big deal. It's one of their rites of passage. Um, and so Lori Gay knew that the kids were feeling disappointed about this. So she asked families um, to go ahead and have the spaghetti supper and put their kids in charge of being a waiter or waitress and um, you know, set the table and those kinds of things. And we got a lot of pictures back from families who did that. I, I think um, it was definitely an example of making the best of that situation. Okay. Um, tonight, there's going to be two meetings for families. Um, I'm sending out links later on tonight. So there'll be a pre-K to two parent meeting and then a three through six parent meeting. Um, just so that we can sort of go over what we know as of this moment in terms of expectations for students because there's a lot of um, a lot of concern around that. Um, people wondering if, you know, if, if my child doesn't do everything that the teacher has sent, are they going to have a bad grade? Are they going to be retained in <clears throat> retained in their in the grade that they're in now? Um, so I'm hoping that the meetings we have tomorrow night can dispel some of the worry that folks are having. Um, and then on Saturday morning there will be a Waitley Elementary School wave parade. So the staff members are gonna gather at Waitley Elementary School um, at 9.45.
everyone's staying in their own cars mm -hmm. um, and some cars will be decorated and, and we're going to drive through Waitley. There's a, a route that we've mapped out. Um, we're going to share that with families. I'll send that to you. And families are invited to come out and wave and um, stay distance away from everybody, but um, to give a chance for the kids to see the faces of the people that they were used to seeing every day. And also I think the teachers need it just as much as the kids do. That's um, great. So that's that's where we're at. Okay. Can you can you invite us to the parent meeting or those of us that aren't on it already? <laughs> you mind if yeah. we join it? No, that's <laughs> fine. Interested to see what people are asking. Um, yeah, because then if someone asks any tough questions, I'll say, well, we have a school committee member here. Yeah, Katie, well, I, I can like try and back you up if you want. Um, and then I, are this so our kids having class? I guess I'm just kind of confused. Like, I know there's a lot of connection going on, but is it like everyone has class at a certain time or is it more just they're connecting one on one with people or how yeah, is that? So working? There is a lot in working through this. One of the things is that it's there's a lot of comparing ourselves to other districts. Well, we're hearing that this district is having the kids sitting in front of the computer for four hours a day. And, um, we had to sort of put aside all we're hearing from everyone else and figure out what's best for our kids. And one of the things that is a huge challenge is to say that we expect a child to be in front of a computer at specific times during the day, because it doesn't work with what's going on in everyone's home. <clears throat> we have kids whose parents are still working either from home or out of the home. We mm -hmm. have a lot of families who are sharing devices. And so if, if we have, three kids at home and we're telling them all to be in front of a computer at a specific time it's just creating more stress and problems for folks at home um mm -hmm. we tried to to share as many chromebooks as um the need arose and i'm hoping that that sort of helped a little bit but we would like teachers to have times when they um meet with the whole class but it would be a if you're able to join us this time please join us um but there will always be another one and then it's sort of easier to manage some of that in small groups. So mm -hmm. teachers are, for the most part, getting face to face with their kids um, you know, a couple times a week. But the expectation is not that when I say you're at the computer to meet, that you have to be there. It's just not okay. it's not realistic. Um, Chrissy, does, Chrissy, does any of our kids don't have Internet right now? At this moment, everyone is is hooked in somehow. Thank you. So we, Katie, Katie, I can tell you with my kids, um, you know, they've met with their classes. Um, it's not to teach a lesson. It's just to have everyone together from what I've seen. And mm -hmm. the teacher, they share and um, catch up with each other. Uh-huh. Are, are, yeah, are, yeah. are they getting work through the computer? Or are they printing stuff through their computer? There's no, there's no expectation that people are printing things. I'm sure that some families are printing things out um, for various reasons, but there is no expectation that people have a printer at home or one that's working. Um, I know in my house, the printer always seems to be broken. So we didn't want to uh, assign anything that was dependent on you being able to print something out. So there are, it all comes to the parents through email or through the kids email. Um, but each teacher has been instructed to provide some non screen time activities, along with all the things that they can do on the screen, because we we understand that sitting in front of this thing all day isn't really what we were hoping for for the kids. And the teachers have been very flexible about that. So if that something need to be printed, and that doesn't work for you, there's other options. You don't, they give several options of what you can do and you don't have to do every assignment. Um, the other thing is we were running low on printer ink, so they could also type it into a Google doc and share it with their class page. And um, the other thing is they could just write it on a piece of paper and we can take a picture and send it. We haven't done that, but we did write it on, we, my girls had to write before we got ink. They were writing stuff down. So there is yeah. other other ways around it. So yeah, there's there's no way to get through this without a huge amount of flexibility and, mm -hmm. and choices for things to do different things. Yeah. If one thing is not possible for them, 
that there's something else that they can do. Yeah. What happens with early childhood? Um, our the early kids childhood, are pretty young. Our early childhood teacher has uh, sort of been knocking it out of the park. Like day one, she had a class page set up and she was, um, she'd put a little video clip up of a read aloud. Um, she would take the kids on a nature hike with her and she would film it and point out different things. She had a poem on there every day. She set up a page where parents were just talking to each other. Um, she's really, you know, the little kids were the ones I was really concerned with how we're going to make those connections. But um, Chrissy Huntley's done a great job and, and it's kind of shown us that you have to be a little creative. It's not a lot of time in front of the screen. Um, mm -hmm. there, there are ways to, to keep them involved in the learning. That's Thank great. You. I think the, the, the last part is that we are also, this is evolving <laughs> as each week we go further, we're getting more feedback from parents that this is working. Some things aren't working for some families and that's why as Chrissy said, we have to be flexible. But mm -hmm. also at the same time, we start talking, the longer we're in this, the, you know, rigor, is rigor, do we increase rigor? Do, you know, those kind of things as people get, a, you know, get more comfortable with this model and with, you know, that kind of thing. So we're working with parents on it. It's also, um, there's also a full range of skills in the households of which we're asking, you know, parents right. to, to do things. So it's, it's, a, it's a tough model. It's a tough model yeah. to do on the fly, but uh, I think we're off to a good start. Like, how about um, I have a question um what what I was just going to ask for um kids that are on IEPs how's that going um actually we're, I mean tough. we're we're fortunate to be in a small school where we can really take a peek in on each individual kid and the the first week um one of the things that we did was we went through the the list of students who are receiving special education services to see what that could look like. And it was week one, so we were kind of just like, the point was to make sure that someone's checking in on those kids to see, and the, and the parents to see what kind of support they need. Um, since then, we have, we've almost gotten to the point where they're all done, where we've written not an IEP, but a, a remote learning individualized plan, um, where we have the, the student's goals, and then, um, a grid of what we're going to provide for them. It's not going to look like the, the grid that they have on their IEP, but we're trying to get support in there to reach to meet each one of the goals that they have in their IEP. And the teachers are meeting, um, you know, Terry Anderson works one on one with, with her kids. She meets with them every day. She's always hopping when we're in a meeting. She's always like, I got to go. I'm reading a book with so and so. Um, it's been a little trickier with the younger kids because one of the the special education teacher um, for the lower grades is one of the ones who had the baby. So we've been trying to work our way around that. Um, but we have so much support. The IAs have been great at, you know, jumping in and helping out wherever it's needed. And, um, you know, it's been a, a massive team effort. And, and at this point, I feel comfortable that no one is falling through the cracks. And remind me, are we? Are you guys on break? Do you, are you taking that week off in April? Is that sort so of it, it's, or do we know? it's an excellent that question. Week? Right now, the break is planned uh, to happen when it's planned to happen. So mm -hmm. um, in, in two weeks, will be a, a spring break. Um, because they haven't closed school for the remainder of the school year, it's it's very difficult to make a decision whether or not you you skip it in order to reduce the number of days of the year. Um, our teachers, you know, so. And I was having a conversation with actually with the union leaderships in both unions um, today regarding this. Um, our teachers kind of got working straight out of the gate and not mm -hmm. all districts were the same way. Some of them took a couple weeks off and then built up this slowly and they really were not um, as, um, I was gonna say, on the ball as our teachers oh, were. Yeah. And so so, so the, the idea of getting a break, some of them really need it. There is also some who are saying, you know, you know, yeah, some are saying like, let's just power through and we get out a week earlier. Um, it, of course, that would look different if we went back to school. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going back to school, but um, mm -hmm. we're waiting for the state to make that decision for us. So, um, okay. So, would the school committee have to get involved if, in terms of, if we were to change the calendar, it would be a school committee decision. So, well, okay. to be honest with you, the state, the state said they were going to tell us what was going to happen there. Um, a lot of the superintendents said this should be a local decision. 
which means when I read all those superintendents saying that, there's no way the state's going to jump in the middle of that political hotbed if they were, mm -hmm. you know, they've taken a conservative route on every other decision. Why wouldn't they do that here? <laughs> um, so I think they're going to say, it's oh, not like you can go anywhere. What's that? It's not like you can go anywhere. I know. I know. No, but this has been this has been a lot of hard work. I I don't work any fewer hours now than I did. Yeah. That, um, I believe you. <laughs> except that no one has a concept of time or day, so it's sort of like all day long into the night, and then on the weekends, because you know what what else is the, what else is there? Um, and the teachers have been the same way. They've really been knocking it out, and I feel like you know I don't want to speak for parents, but as a parent, I, I would probably need a little moment to have the family catch our breath and, and not have to worry about um, checking in online and doing assignments and all that. But uh, mm -hmm. Maureen, Maureen, what's your take on that? Uh, it's <laughs> I have mixed feelings. It's It's been a struggle for um, some of mine and some of mine it's been going pretty smoothly. Um, I definitely feel like I could use a break, but I also dread doing this for the whole rest of the school year. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's I'm, funny, yeah. it's funny, morning. I got two at home too, and it's the same thing. It's going well, you know, part, some days it works well, some days it doesn't. And then, you know, would I rather take my, I'm the type of person that takes the pain early. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> but, but I still, I see the other side of the, the teacher's end where they could give, they could use a recharge. Um, that's why I did, you know, I was talking to the unions today regarding this because um, you know it will be it'll come back to us if we have to do it we'll probably have to do it as a joint meeting because we all have to do it together um, right. but um, just trying to get okay. the feeling because and also where teachers are after we unroll this because you have to also remember that we did three weeks and then we changed it up on them for this week and so this week the teachers are really kind of seeing what the real the model the rhythm. for some it's not a complete change but they, they're how it rolls out this week and is it it's certainly more exhausting in the beginning than it is, you know, I'm going to say for the teachers, it could be exhausting every day, but it certainly got to be more exhausting in the beginning when yeah. everything's new and you're getting your daily routines and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I have a question because the, you know, teachers have contracts. We can change the schedule like that. We can take away April vacation we would have, if we voted on it. It is under this, the school committee could do that. Yes. They would have okay. to, you have to work with the, the, the unions on that. So, if, if the teachers all was just all or nothing, it's easier that way, all wanted to have the break, we I think we would have some difficulty um, changing the contract to not have the break. I think right. that is important to get the teachers feedback. And if they were all for not having the break and, and doing the school earlier, um, you know, I think we should strongly consider mm -hmm. that. I think they're, you know, I think they're the number one poll to really go after. Um, yeah, you know. I, I guess I and I kind of feel the same way as you is I'd rather take the pain now and, you know, end it a week earlier. Also, getting out of a routine for a week. Some yeah. kids don't handle that so well. And then going back into that school routine, which is different. And I can tell you that would be a struggle for. Well, the, and the, for the biggest problem is we're waiting for the state to make the decision. Mm -hmm. Right. So someone could easily say, how could you cancel spring break when you don't even know if we're going to go back to school May 4th? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right now, you're absolutely right. And as we sit in kind of this limbo, um, and, and I haven't heard any any uh, any whispers of when that decision is going to be made. And, and there was no whispers prior to the one making it, extending mm -hmm. it to April 4th. It, was, it came out of nowhere. I was driving in the car and got a yeah. text from Shelly, and I had to run home and write an email. So, yeah. <laughs> But either way, it would just reduce the school year a week, essentially, is what we would do. So, yeah. well, I, I support, you know, I, I kind of defer to you guys, you, Darius and Chris, Chrissy, to figure, to decide what you guys think is best for the schools. Yeah. I think the parents, the key is just to kind of make sure the parents are aware and yeah. prepared. I mean, if you want to ask them, then you're going to have to kind of let them. <laughs> no, I, would, I wouldn't ask them. I mean, well, we, not, but we want to consider what the impact is going to be, obviously, on the parents. I mean, if 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 if, if everything's closed and the state's doing the same thing, all these parents, if they're working from home, they're going to be at home anyway. Right, but, but not every not everybody's working from home. Yeah, and 
Uh, well, the one, and I really feel for the parents that are working and have young children at home. They're probably the hardest hit group of all of everybody right now. I mean, yeah, there are a lot of hard hit groups. <laughs> some of those on the staff and, and early on, it was very stressful for folks who are trying to balance. Juggle. Yeah. Um, right, okay. Well, well look for you guys to let us know what we need to do with anything on that. Um, What's next on the agenda? Well, I thought what, what next on the agenda I thought was that Chrissy said she's not embarrassed on being on these calls anymore. And so Bob, I'm sorry, I'm sorry you can't see I this. can't see your hairdo. <laughs> you can't see your hairdo, but I'm going to do. What are you doing? <laughs> What are you, you guys, doing? Can you guys see that? What, what are am you I doing? doing? I'm doing. No one can see I me. Don't do anything. Please, yeah, not a second. screenshot. I, that was Chrissy today. A that was Chrissy line. today on a, on a mid meeting. Oh, did you do a crazy hair day or something? We did. We, we did. Uh, you, had to show, you had to show up in costume. Excellent. <laughs> Which one's Chrissy? You're the Easter Bunny. The Easter Bunny. <laughs> awesome. Uh, you weren't smiling though. We must had have, um, must have been a painful meeting. We had no, it actually wasn't. It was pretty good. Um, we had a half day <laughs> meeting early on as well. And it's yeah, it real. my family. <laughs> Got to keep keep them creative, you know. We do, yes. H, H um, is the is the thing on Saturday? Is that going through the school? No, no, Our we're gonna drive. Coming? We're gonna drive through the town. I'll send you the route if you'd like. What day is that? Saturday. All right. <laughs> Are you going anywhere, Maureen? <laughs> <laughs> no, I will be here waving. <laughs> well, we thought, you know, some schools, this has sort of been happening all over the place, and, and we kind of wanted to wait until it had been a little while and use it as sort of a pick-me-up. Um, a lot of places are doing it during a school day, but mm -hmm. teachers have routines that they've already set. And I have yeah. parents who are still working. So some kids might not be able to come out and wait because their parent is working at that time. So we thought Saturday morning, because what else are you gonna do? That's great. I like we that. Did, we did do a, a birthday parade for one of my kids' classmate. The mom had asked us to, you know, we made signs and we all met at the blue school and then we did a parade by his house and beeped and oh. slowed down and... <laughs> And it was a surprise to him. He didn't know it was happening. She had him outside at that time. It was very sweet. That's awesome. Yeah. There's a lot of that kind of stuff going on. <clears throat> okay. All right. So the next thing on the agenda. You ready? Ready. School choice. School choice. I so this is one of those votes that we have to get out of the way. Um, and so it was, it was on the agenda to do at the joint meeting. I figured we'll just break it up into the smaller meetings and and get this kind of just check the box that um, we'll be at school choice school next year. Uh, Chrissy, do you have that document to, to or do you have that on your screen or close there too? Yeah, I. I can go looking for yours. I didn't have it. I have so many screens opened. Do you mean the grid about the different numbers and stuff? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you want to see it or not. I have it up on mine. You can hit share screen and you can just every way you can look at that while we talk about it. Um, Was that sent to us? Yeah, I sent it this afternoon. What are you looking for? I was on the phone. Yeah, you're still on the phone, Bob. No, so <laughs> they're going to share. They're going to share the screen for the school choice to, to make a vote to both be a school choice school next year with the. And just get an idea of what the recommendations are and why. Um, can you, do you have it, Chrissy, or do you want me to pull it up? Yeah, I'm trying. I have the document up, but for some reason, it's not giving me the option to share that screen. No, you just hit um, share screen. Present now. Or present now. Go to the bottom screen. Hit present now, yeah. and then then click in the middle of the screen. It says your entire screen, and then there'll be a little thing you got. Click on the screen. And then you open up the whatever tab. Is, we'll, we'll all be looking at your computer. I, like I do not receive that. There we go. Yeah. It came out right before the meeting, Maureen. And then, then click on the thing. Yeah. Here, I'll forward it to you. Are you seeing that? 
Yep. All right. <clears throat> yep. Perfect. I can't see it, but I'll go with whatever anybody else says. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Bob. We're gonna get you some professional development. Oh, I know. I'm I'm just not a tech person. I'm Don has talked to Scott Paul. Scott Paul's gonna call me and set me up here at home. So good. Yeah, I mean, do you need a Chromebook? Don't we have some Chromebooks? I, I, I sent him one. I I don't know how to hook up to my Wi-Fi. Oh, um, okay. I'm, I'm pretty stupid. I one of my kids over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, basically, just looking at the numbers there, um, you can see the anticipated class sizes for next year in the. And, you know, the, the school openings doesn't mean we'll fill those. It's just we're um, certainly with the applications we have in, but those are the numbers we can go up to. Right. So we're voting on the target size, right, to say that we're comfortable with what those would be yeah. potentially. Yep. Yeah. So I like Bob, make, I like our, our 18 or 20 for the grades, kindergarten, first and second, and then 20 for third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Yeah. I like to make a motion and leave it in Chrissy's um, capacity of uh, using her discretion. She knows where we need them and if we're going to have a, a, a particular class that may have, uh, you know, extra IAPs or something like that. So we have to really look at that. But I would leave it to Chrissy's expertise on this and you well, know, this is her judgment. Right. Yeah. Huh? We've we've this got a Chrissy's lot of recognition, right? Yeah. We've got a lot of leeway in there. We've got some small classes. Good. Let's get yeah. some school choice kids to fill them. Well, this is our like recruiting season, so it's a little tricky. Yeah. Which so I, I second Bob's well, I mean, I guess we're just are we just voting to say we approve we approve these target sizes essentially? Yeah. So, yes, I think so. So I make a motion to approve the target size as listed. Second, as second listed. with uh, Chrissy's, um, um, also Chrissy's discretion. Say, Chrissy, discretion discretion on it also. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Um, you have to do a roll, I'm sorry, you have to do a roll call vote, Katie. Sorry. Oh, roll it's call. Roll virtual. Okay. Okay, Maureen. Maureen. Yes. Bob. Yes. Katie, yes. Thank you, Thank you Mary. Because <laughs> <laughs> that is an official vote that I have to submit to the state that we are a school choice school. Okay. So that's why I was being, um, being but Speaking of advertising at this time, you know, at this point, I'm just curious <laughs> if there's um, stuff we can be putting on the website about, you know, how Waitley is adapting to this new situation and all the great work that's going on and maybe photos or things. Of, that might be enticing or intriguing to people. Yeah. Does that make sense? Or are we doing anything like that? It does. I'm, I'm working on that. There's a whole lot of different things that need to come together. Um, I put together a Google site that you'd have to get to from our, our homepage. But then there's access issues with certain things. So I got to work that out with Maureen and, and Scott, but it is in the works. Okay, good. Because I think that, you know, obviously people are still probably thinking about next year and the web is going to be the best way they're going to get information right now. So whatever we can make available and sort of promote. Yeah. I was better. trying to think if there's some new avenue that we could go down given our current circumstances, but I'm not sure what that would be. Um, yeah. Well, you could have maybe like like these parent meetings you're having, you could have like a school school choice meeting or something where people could ask questions or I don't know. It's like I'm trying to think of what might yeah. be appealing to other families or how Let's see if I can um, put some advertising on <laughs> Amazon boxes as they're being delivered in the, the greater Wheatley area. <laughs> you might ask the school choice families at Waitley what they might suggest. They might have some ideas about what they would be would have been looking for. Yeah, well, and Mary always tells me that, you know, the, the way we get the most school choice word of mouth. is word of mouth, is from yeah. other school choice families. So um, certainly reach out to them and ask them to tell a friend. Yes, exactly. Okay. Great, thank you. 
for each friend they tell, they can get a day off of homeschooling. <laughs> Does that mean I have to go? Just kidding. <laughs> so, are we getting the driveway paved while we're all not there? <laughs> that would have been a good thing. <laughs> that would have been. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's an expensive project if money needs to be saved. No, I know. I was joking. <laughs> I was joking, but I don't, there's no projects going on. I mean, there are a lot of places that are taking advantage of this time to get projects done while people aren't there, right? As the building is basically empty and closed at this yeah, point. We, we actually can't have custodians in by the governor's order right now to do project work. They can only be in to do things related to this closure, you know, safety kind of things. Um, you can't be doing any new construction projects, although if there is something that was previously started, you can finish that, but they can't do summer work. It's written really specifically right now. Okay, that's good to know. Hey, Darius, yep. Darius, have we talked to Bill about shutting the heat off in these five yep. schools? Okay. Yep. So that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna save us some money in all five schools. So, yep. Although oil, although gas and oil is getting really cheap right, right now. now. <laughs> hey, but whatever we could save, boy. Yep. I mean, it's you got it. Yeah. Okay, so I, I the only you know again I just want to echo what I said earlier, which is how. Um, appreciative I am of all the work that you guys are doing, and I think if we can highlight this as we market the school also i think um you know it'll go a long way in the new world out there so you should think about making sure that people are aware of all the good work that's going on yeah yeah um, that's, that's a good idea to get those things up i think even just for the school community to be able to check in and see what other families yeah. are doing. um and i want to add i said something before but um our whole admin team kim and darius and sarah and Scott, I mean, the IT department has yeah. been whacked. Like, we've all had to you know, work harder and learn new things, but they are they are hearing from every single person in the district, I need help with this and I need help with that. So um, mm -hmm. everyone has just really been so supportive. Not for a minute did I feel like I was twisting in the wind with this on my own. That's great. Yeah. They're small but mighty, I should say, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's not, it's not going that way in other schools because I've got friends who are in other places and it's it's not going well in a lot of places. Yeah, no, I know. And I think that's why it's important for us to, you know, be proud of that and not be shy about letting people know that we have good leadership in place because that makes the school really. Um, okay. So, uh, any other updates, Maureen? Uh, is the collaborative doing anything right now? Um, we did have a meeting. They, they, um, you know, talked about how they were about the pandemic and all that, and they were trying to write a couple new policies, having, um, you know, if one director wasn't available or for some reason got sick, the next person in charge and going two, three people along that route. And then it was routine stuff. Um, mm -hmm. okay. uh, Chrissy, We're you did do the update, right? Mm -hmm. And then, um, well, and who is, so this is a good question actually though, if you were to get sick, not that I want that, of course we want you to stay healthy. But who would be in charge, just so we're all clear at, at the elementary school, how that works? Oh, that'd be good to say. No, um, <laughs> we, would, we would basically, I'd figure out between, uh, between Kim, myself, and another principal, we'd probably divide up duties. In terms of day-to-day -day operations. Um, mm -hmm. Mary. <laughs> yeah, well, Mary, I know. What if Mary gets um, sick? Then we're really sunk. No, she can't get sick. Um, Poor Mary. I'm I'm relieved to say that in the first three weeks I didn't get sick because that would have been a disaster. I feel confident that God forbid anything should happen from now on. There's a little bit of a pattern and a routine to things right now that mm -hmm. you know 
and I think that was the an essential piece of getting a structure in place is so that if anyone needs to back off, the structure is still there. Right. Uh, and the admin team has worked so closely together. So every the other principals and Darius and can they all know what's going on in every building? So it would not be um, it would not be impossible for someone to to step in and help out where it was needed. Okay. Well, I just think it's good to have those things thought about so that it can we can be clear and I'm it can trying, happen. Quickly. I've been trying not to think about it. <laughs> well, no, I mean, look at Boris Johnson, right? I mean, come on, we have to be thought I thinking try not about to. <laughs> these things. And if we do it, then nothing will happen and we won't have right. to use it, right? So. Yeah. And um Terry Anderson as the she's sort of the she's the lead, lead teacher. teacher. Um mm -hmm. she certainly is capable of of stepping in and and uh keeping, keeping keeping everything running. running. Yeah. Okay. That's that's what I was expecting you to say because she has done that in the past. Yep. She's got a big job right now too, though, so I I hesitate to say that she would be able to manage the the whole deal because she's really checking in closely with her kids and spending a lot of time with them. Mm hmm. Okay. Well, just I just want to raise the question so you guys are make sure you're thinking about it. Um. And then superintendent update. Anything else? On your side? No, it was mixed in everything else. <laughs> <laughs> got enough I want to ask the same question that Katie just asked. What do we do? Yeah, what what do, we do? Well, that's where Sarah would probably step in, right? Is right. That right. Sarah, between Sarah, Kim, and Shelly, the three of them can um, yeah. figure out. I know stuff. it's hard to come in? but I would encourage having a, one person because it's hard to manage by um, triumvirates or co yeah but right each one has their level but where it does get divided up is each one has their level of expertise and the good news is team wise we don't really have um power hungry people who are going to step on it. they're going to try to they'd work collaboratively on trying to get um you know getting by what they have to get by and it also depends on how you know when you talk about at a commission being ill and not being 100 percent versus being not being able to communicate at all um, it's a very different I didn't even say anything more of it, just not being able to communicate. Um, right, right. It changes it changes what has to be done, you know, because you know, some things can be put off or I mean, I heard Bob's joke in the background, which wasn't funny. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you heard that, huh? Oh yeah, thanks, Bob. <laughs> Sorry. No joking. This is not a joking matter. Uh, no, I okay. know. But we do have to have a good gonna... time. Katie, are we going to pass on these first readings? We need to know much about the first readings of these policies. I'm I don't need to, but if you guys want, okay. do you need to no, nope. I just I just I just didn't know if there was anything important, Darius, the other only, than the removal of three it, of them here and yeah, and the two other. The ones. only comment is on the the school committee meeting one. Um, I am in conversation with our attorney um, regarding public comment because there was the request from the Frontier Committee that we looked at the chair has the ability to waive it. Um, and then when he was reading through it, he said, you know, he wanted to take a longer look at it. He wanted to call MASC to get their opinion on something as well. So that may come back written a little different. And I think that that's probably of all those policies, it's the most important one, because that's mm -hmm. one that you kind of fall back on when things, if there was ever a public comment that was, you know, going against the business of the committee and you had to use the policy in order to enforce something, you want to make sure everybody's comfortable with that. So th while we're in the first reading on that one, that may not be ready to vote on um, at the next meeting, but we'll see. Thank you. I do have a, a small comment on that one. Um, yep. under, under the public comment one, number three says topics for discussion must be limited to those items, list the school committee, scope of authority, et cetera. It says topics for discussion. And I, I don't know if it should say topics for comment. Uh -oh. Meant to be a discussion. With um, I mean, I can ask that as well within that. That's uh, a good point. That's just my picky eye. Policy <laughs> writer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if this is what the MASC is recommending, this wording, then. They are, but I'll be honest with you, that's it's, that's exact. His Adam's concern was the the term um, purview of the school committee because he goes, he said that gets really wide, 
rather than the agenda. But I think that's what they were trying to get away from is that the public should be able to comment on something that's on the purview of the school committee, but it may not be on the agenda. And while we've right. never enforced a rule like that, because that was our old our old um, policy, um, if someone was to start doing that, you know, it, it, it's not in the pure the nature of public comment that I think the spirit of what we we wanted as a committee. I agree. Matter. So we'll see what he comes back with. Public comment is often not right. You broke up in the middle there, Maureen, you have to repeat that. I, I was saying people who have a public comment, it's often been something that's not been on the agenda. Correct. And but you, the important is it has to be under the purview of the school committee. So you, you can't oh, right. you can't bring a complaint that the school committee can do nothing about. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so and that's the only thing where, you know, the school committee usually is polite and they hear it and then they look over at the principal or they or at me and they say like fix that that's not our job and, and then it gets done but um if they go way off the reservation and then okay go completely, down. Down and completely you know then you really yeah you, know, you want to be able to okay. point that out and uh, can you darius can you say anything about the negotiations or what is there anything happening it's there? basically it's come to a standstill we had one meeting and then this kind of thing kind of fell apart so okay. um yeah, so we're gonna have to, you know, that's gonna be interesting too, because with the financial downturn of the state, that's gonna make things even more tricky for the goals we were hoping to come out with. So mm -hmm. more to come on that, but we'll see. Okay. What about also, um, probably still at a standstill, Chrissy, the the job, the, the hiring of the yeah. teacher? Do you have a teacher open? Uh, kindergarten. Um, haven't quite figured out how that's going to work yet. I there's a piece of my brain that hopes we'll be back on May fourth so that I can stop. Um, I really, really, really don't like hiring a teacher without seeing a lesson. Mm -hmm. So I, I've got to figure out. And I mean, it's not even. You know, I've had situations before where someone had to videotape a lesson and send it. I don't even have the possibility of that unless they videotaped a lesson to nobody. Um, you know, with no kids in the room. So I'm going to have to figure out how to, how to manage my way through that. But it was sort of, for these first few weeks, it was sort of low on the on the agenda. Yeah, yeah especially that grade level too, where the human interaction is probably one of the most important factors of the mm -hmm. higher. <laughs> yeah. And not just human interaction, but adult to child interaction. That's what I meant, the human to human. They're children <laughs> humans. Right. Well, a lot of times you can be great at, at interacting with the adult humans. It's, yeah. you know, when you put the rubber to the road is when you really get to see what's going on. So I have to figure that out. But I'm guessing that a lot of people are in that same position. So I'm hoping to be able to rely on some other folks to problem solve with and figure out a good solution. I'll, I'll revoke the retirement of the person who is trying to <laughs> Well, or we could theoretically hire a long-term sub for one year and then do a hire, right? If we wanted to. Right. Change your yeah. it does change your applicant pool, but sometimes right. people won't want to do a long-term sub. Right. Um, I guess I'm not in the loop here. What's going on with the kindergarten teacher? She's retiring. Oh. How many years has she been there? I'm not sure. Since Maxwell okay. was in kindergarten, so let's see. That's probably eight years. Eight. Okay. No. Ten years. Is she retiring at the end of the year? Is that what the plan is? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can well, we start looking for a new kindergarten teacher? If she's leaving on by July first, can we can we legally hire a new kindergarten teacher? Yeah. So the normal, normally we would do interview process right around now. And then what Chrissy was oh, just yeah. saying, it, it gets a little more difficult when you can't do a human to human interview process and then also human to human, you know, class practice lesson so we can see them teach. So that was the whole. God, yeah. we yeah. I'm sorry. sorry. My mind should be working better like yours. <laughs> 
I could really see how good someone is by having them teach a lesson on a like this, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> with kindergartners. <laughs> well, there you go. My daughter, my daughter went through three virtual things for her San Diego job, so you could do, you know, some of these online. I mean, you know, just get a get a pool of people and interview them online. Yeah, I can. We can do that part. It's just it it falls apart in the place where that I think is the biggest piece of of hiring is seeing seeing what they're like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, so our next meeting is May twelfth. It looks like. Oh, we'll it's be back to school by then. <laughs> right? Wouldn't that be nice? Yes. So yeah, it, we'll probably have a meeting prior to that. Uh, Katie, I mean, we'll see where the what the tea leaves give us in the in the sense of when we get when we get more information, we mm -hmm. need to have a meeting. Um, okay. You'll let us I'll know. I'll send a doodle out to do that. Um, we also are going to be looking at we we got to set next year's calendar, mm -hmm. but you know we're talking about that at the administrative level right now in the sense of what could that look like? Should it change? What does that mean? And there's a lot of moving parts about you know um, especially if we're close to the end of the year. How do we bring kids back? What does summer programming look like? There's a lot of things that are on the burner right behind me, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. That's going to need some school committee um, just to just a keep you informed of what's going on, and then um, in, in those areas where I need approval from you guys as well. So, so we'll be doing another meeting probably. I would say two weeks out or so. Maybe maybe the last week. I'm pulling up my calendar as I'm on here. Probably maybe even the last week of April. I, I would, you know, I would pretty much count on. You talking about a joint that. meeting? Is that a joint meeting, or is that oh, just us? Uh, um, we'll see what we have to do because I, okay. I we have because this is so much better than the joint meeting. But the joint mm. meeting is good to get the school calendar will have to be approved through the joint meeting. But we may roll it out and have discussions about it first, especially if we share. You know, some of the ideas we have are crazy. So, you know, you know, we'll see what that. You know, you know how far we go away from the mainstream kind of thing, depending on. Input. So when we start about budgets, we're not going to be doing that in a joint meeting. So yeah. So we're not have joint meeting this week, right? There's no joint meeting this week. This was that okay. was canceled. Okay. Replaced by this. Yep. Okay, so are okay. you going to have to meet with uh, the joint school committee to make a determination about April vacation? <laughs> yes, I would have to. That's going to have to be. If it changes, but, but, but I can't. Right, but my problem there is I can't make that determination if I don't know when we go back to school. <clears throat> and that's where it's kind of like that's why it's harder to to switch gears and and cancel the vacation because I need that the governor to make a decision regarding what's going on after May fourth. Right. So the plan is that you're having vacation for the time yeah. being, yeah. really, and then yeah. if something were to change, then you'd have to have a meeting. Right. 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 Well, is there anything that the school committee can be doing to help you guys? Because I don't feel like I'm doing very much, but you guys are doing a lot, so that's good. Well, you must be helping your two kids at home with with uh, classroom time and helping. They're pretty self sufficient, I have to say. So, I unfortunately am working and spending more time on Zoom calls than I really want to. But um, watch out for Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> Zoom. Didn't they say that on the news last night? Zoom. People there was in. The era of Zoom on TV, so that <laughs> stupid song is oh. in my head all the time. But <laughs> uh. no, I mean, I, I guess on your end, just keeping an eye on what the what the, the budget news is and that kind of stuff. Continue to talk with people you know in the town yes. government. <laughs> I've been doing know, that a um, lot. <laughs> get, get some updates on that because you're going to probably know even probably before me, Katie, on with the where the tea leaves are going on what we may need to do to help the town and um, yep. that kind of stuff so getting you know that's gonna be the toughest part we we did all the work for a budget now we got to start over again I, I was laughing with i was laughing with shelly not only does shelly have to do five budgets but she has to do five budgets five. more than once oh my, <laughs> god. First year. oh my god well hopefully it won't be i mean I, the the tea leaves right now are pretty good in whaley it all depends on the state so i think if we can, um, you know, hopefully we'll get through that part without too much more rework is my my hope. But uh, we'll keep you posted on anything I learn. Great. Yeah. All right. So I'll be in touch okay. for our next meeting and everybody should stay well. Yeah.
Okay, motion to adjourn at 525. I second. All in favor? Aye. I don't think I'm supposed to do the motion, but. <laughs> well, thank you guys again, and hope you can enjoy the nice day out there.